with the wrong electricity, it will attack. Here comes even cooked food. Now it's called leukocytosis. And let's say that I'm healthy and I have some cooked food. I can handle that leukocytosis. But let's say that I have cancer and I want, I need every oxygen, everything that I can have. I need my white blood cells to be in top shape. Then that's not a good thing. Because now I keep them busy. I'm going to show you how. It's, it's a business. It's so, the more you study this, you see it's just like having a business. So your body just get, takes control back. Once it gets the tools that it always wanted, like nourishment, oxygen, enzymes, great protein. You know, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, so 33%. B cells mainly hang out in your spleen. And I seldom see them in your blood unless you come here with the flu or something. Then they're going to be up because they make antibodies. See, the T cell stores all antibodies that it ever used. So let's say as a child you had chicken pox, well then you baked an antibody and you kicked it out, you healed it. Well now if you're around kids with chicken pox you won't have it because your T cells will now send out antibodies. So let's say the virus came into your blood. Whatever antibody the T cell has stored, it will just immobilize that virus and it's the end of it. What if it's a brand new one? So now, for example, the big scare now is swine flu. So they're, and they, they're saying exactly the same thing, that it's a brand new virus, we don't really know how to treat it. We will have vaccinations by October, but you know, we don't know if it's even going to work. Well, so guess what? For all millions of years probably that we've been here, we have B cells that makes antibodies and we know that but somehow we totally forget so now this brand new virus came in here and oops T cell does not have an antibody within three days will the B cell have made an antibody now the T cell can use it and immobilize that's why most places where you hear people that had swine flu unless they were very very ill to begin with within three days they recover Within three days, they recover because the B cells just working its tail off, making that antibody for you. Now that will forever be stored in the T cell. So it's like one huge computer. Imagine this. Now, then they found that sometimes we have T cells that are renegades. They did not get the education they should have. See, in the thymus, they get molecules. They get atoms that are working in a different way for each uh, kind of T cell. And some are renegade. They didn't get up. They didn't get all the molecules. And they come out and they cause autoimmune problems like MS, like type 1 diabetes, like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue, <coughs> you name it. Fibromyalgia is called the autoimmune. So then they found, well, it's not like we're totally uh, not immune to that, that we don't have a system to run after those renegades. Now they found, they call them T regulators. They are super educated and they know what the renegades look like. And renegades, you know, can go through the brain barrier. So they can also go through the brain barrier. So we actually have an immune system that's so impeccable, we don't know probably a, maybe a fifth yet about our immune system. You know, there's so much more to come in future. What we can do until science pick up and really find that, oh, raw living food is the way to go. <laughs> we just gotta live it, we gotta do it, you know? Because you gotta find that foods, first of all, Animal uh, protein, I sit and look at all the time, is a big problem. Big, big problem. From the chicken, from the uh, cows, from you know the veal, from the uh, eggs, from the dairy products. That kind of protein is really not for us. We were not meant to digest that. And we, we pay a big, big price with lots of diseases we should not have had. So now, so third of our white blood cells are the T and the B. Then you have the guys that con
constantly roam around and constantly cleaning. They get 60%. They're called neutral fills. And they're, they're scavengers. So their job, I and mean, nearly two-thirds are there, they're constantly roaming around and clean up. Actually clean up the plasma, make sure there's nothing in there, debris, waste, yeast, uh, uh, acid, mainly uh, a lot of crystals of heavy protein and, and sugar and fat. <clears throat> so they're roaming around and they clean the walls of the red blood cells up. You know, the red blood cells are so impeccable. They have, if this is a red blood cell, they have a fluid around them to protect them from invaders. And it's thin like water. And, you know, when you first arrive, your blood might be sticky like this instead of red blood cells all separated. And it's usually from heavy protein, sugar, and fat. It makes them sticky, but also medications, but also infections and inflammations. So there are a lot of reasons. And actually, women having their menstruation will also look like that, <clears throat> and unless you're super athletic. But, you know, otherwise they will be sticky because the uh, whole um, enzyme activity is different at that time. So, 60% of those. Then we get to the other guys with that work together. You have something called eosinophil and basophil. Basophil, I give like 0 0.2 and, and eosinophil 3. They work together with yeast, parasites and allergies. So now if I have an allergen, let's say I ate wheat and I'm allergic to it, then basophil will get the order from T cell. T cell is the boss of everything. So we'll give orders to basophil to make histamine because that's going against an allergen. So now that makes histamine, eosinophil will use it and attack the, hista the allergen with that histamine and that's over. Now, then you get an allergy reaction. So now <clears throat> most of us would take an antihistamine. Like if I have asthma, I take all kinds of steroids, sprays, and these numbers will go up, 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 up. And it just shows they're trying their best, you know. But if I take antihistamine, I'm not really listening to my body. I'm, I'm really just, you know, putting a bandage on top of the message that I'm constantly getting. So, you know, sometimes we just get a detox and, and let, let things happen. Then I have one that is fantastic. It's called the monocyte. <laughs> and they're 4% normally of your white blood cell. They will go for any inflammation. They will go for uh, cancer, arthritis, HIV, uh, lupus, hep C, um, fibromyalgia, you name it. They always going to be on the go. So 4% is not enough then. So look at this now. It is a business. So let's say that our business was going bankrupt. Okay. Housekeeping. This is big housekeeping. I get 60% there. Now, I'd rather have a brainstorming team. So let's say that I have this tumor in my body. And there's a picture I have from a Swedish medical photographer that is full of the egg and the sperm for nine months. You've probably seen his pictures. He, he's just incredible. Leonard Nelson. Anytime you see pictures like that from the medical standpoint inside people's body, it's always him. Anyway, here is a picture of a tumor. And here is T cells and B cells, and then you have monocytes in here and T cells and B cells. And what he says is that they drill a hole and then they pour their poison, which is interferon and interleukin, pure poison for a tumor, pure poison for any inflammation. So now, how am I going to get these guys? The, the, the lymphocytes and the monocytes, those are the two that's going to attack that. Well, I can drop the housekeeping now here. I can drop them to 30%. And I know that because after all these years, this is what happens here. After three weeks here, this is what I sit and look at. Maybe not 30, maybe 35, but you know, it drops. Now I have 30% to divide. Look at this. I can move up the brains here. 
maybe 15%, maybe 70%, I mean, up, up, up. And I can give another 10 to my monocytes. <clears throat> now, I have the gangbusters that's going to go after that tumor. 